There are different types of Airbnb rentals, and some are definitely more profitable than others. In today's video, I'm gonna show you which types of Airbnb properties are the most profitable. But before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Hey everyone, my name is Jorge Contreras, and I have grown my Airbnb portfolio to over 100K a month, and we're gonna talk about which properties will give you the most amount of cash flow. Let's go. Look, I know that when people are starting their Airbnb business, they want to get the best bank for their buck. But I think that's the challenge is people don't really know which properties make more sense and which ones are going to give you a better ROI. So make sure you guys stick to the very end so you know which one to start your Airbnb business with. So there are really two types of properties that when looking to start an Airbnb business, people are looking at. And that is a single family home or an apartment for the most part. Now, a single family residence, we identify as an SFR, single family residence. It basically means that there is one property on one lot. Or if it was a duplex, it would be two properties on one lot, a triplex, three properties on one lot, and a fourplex, four properties on one lot. So a single family residence, one house, one lot. And that is definitely an option that a lot of people consider when starting. The other option that is also very popular is starting with an apartment building. And I feel that a lot of people wanna start with an apartment building because it is a lot more affordable and especially if they're starting with their first Airbnb, they feel like this is a low hanging fruit opportunity and it's gonna require less furniture, less appliances, less rent, less deposit, and that's true. But is it better than starting with a single family residence? Let's talk about it. So for this example, I'm gonna pick a city near where I live just to make this make sense. Now, the numbers I use in my area may not be relevant to your area. You might be higher or lower, but I'm gonna pick Long Beach, California, okay? Right on the beach. Now, a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment on the water, on the sand, typically runs right now about $2,800 to $3,000. And again, it's because it's in prime real estate, prime location. You basically go downstairs and your toes are in the sand. And these properties typically do really well because of proximity. They're on the beach. They're close to downtown where all the action is taking place. Definitely a great place to go on vacation. You don't even need a car uh, to go anywhere because everything is within walking distance. Now in a two bedroom, one bathroom, I am able to host say about four to five people max. And in this $2,800 to $3,000 rent, I should be able to double my rent at a minimum as that is what we're typically looking for in the arbitrage model. So if I could charge say $300 a night and get 20 nights booked, then I will hit that $6,000 mark and be able to, to double whatever I'm paying in rent. So after I pay my rent, I should be able to net a little over 2K after paying utilities, rent, and cleaning. I should be able to net a little bit over 2K a month from doing this arbitrage model in an apartment building. Now, let's talk about the same example, but in a single family home in the same location. So I have currently right now a sublease in that area that I rent for $4,700 a month. It's actually my most expensive property. It's a luxury a craftsman home, two blocks from the beach. It's three bedrooms, two baths, 1,400 square feet. Again, we pay $4,700 a month, but we have been bringing in over 12K a month on average since we started this sublease about 10 months ago. So we are making about two and a half X our rent. And what's really powerful about this property is that we're able to host up to 10 people. And so on average, this property is booking anywhere between 400 to $700 a night and even upwards of 1000 whenever there's a special event in the area and there's not enough supply and our prices just skyrocket. So this property, this single family home, after we pay our rent, our utilities, the cleaning, we have been bringing in over $4,000 a month of positive cash flow. Again, that's profit after all expenses. So from my experience, I have been able to generate more profit, higher profit margin from single family homes. And the reason is I'm able to host more people. Now, yes, it is more rent. I'm paying more for furniture, more appliances, more decor. 
it is definitely a much bigger investment up front. And this is why I always tell people, look, if you have the capital, start with the single family home because you're gonna have more leverage. Now, in this example that I just gave you, the apartment going for about, say, three grand, the house going for about 4,700, but in most cases, there is a lesser amount in difference between the apartment and the rent. The reason this one is 47 is again, I went for a high-end luxury craftsman home, but there are other properties in the area that are still very nice and they rent for about 3,500 a month. So that's what I have found is that for an extra three to $600 a month, you can get an entire house rather than the apartment. Now you got a driveway, a front yard, a backyard, maybe a game room, maybe that property has a, a pool or a jacuzzi and you can create a better experience at a fraction of the cost. Not only that, but when you look at you know the shutdowns in 2020, the strategy that allowed us to actually do very well is creating a staycation experience. Like I learned, and I'm so thankful for that experience, there was a lot of people who wanted to get away from their apartments, people who actually lived in apartments for 12 month leases, and they were renting my single family homes to get away from the elevators, the hallways, and all the people because they wanted to social distance and just have a great experience, even if it was for a couple days over a weekend. So in my experience, I have been able to create much better results with single family homes than apartments. I have a philosophy where I say, do what you can with what you have where you are. If your finances only allow you to start with an apartment building, phenomenal. Get started, get your feet wet, build your cash flow, get that experience, and then eventually build up to the single family homes where in my experience, you could have a higher profit margin. Now, just to go over a little bit of the pricing, if you wanted to generate say 6K on that apartment building, then you wanna be able to reach that 6K, which is double your rent by the 20th day, meaning at 66% occupancy. Now you might be wondering, well, okay, why not double by the end of the 30 days? Well, if I could double my numbers by the 20th day, meaning by 66% occupancy, I'm setting myself up to win and for the potential opportunity to maybe even triple, because if I could double at 20 days, that means I could triple at 30 days. That means that with about 10 days, I break even. So after the first 10 days booked of the month, I'm gonna break even, right? $300 times 10 nights, 3K, I just broke even. At 20 nights times 300, that's 6K, I just doubled my rent. And now 30 nights times 300, that's $9,000. And then at that point, I'm tripling my rent. And so there's a lot of softwares out there that you can use to look at the existing revenue and occupancy of active Airbnbs. That way you're not flipping a coin hoping that it's gonna work. It's not a matter of if it's gonna work, it's just a matter of how much. Are you gonna double or are you gonna triple? And now let's do the exact same numbers on how it works for this single family home that I just talked about. Charging $500 a night times 10 nights, that's 5K, basically covers my rent and a little extra. And then at 20 nights, that's 10K, and at 30 nights, that's 15K. And actually, in my very first month of launching, which was in the month of July, we did a little over 15,000. And again, that's because it's in a great area, a great location, the amount of people that we're able to host, and like I said, we're able to create a great experience at a fraction of the cost. Hey, so if after watching this video so far, you feel like starting an Airbnb is a great investment and a smart opportunity, make sure you hit that like button. Let's keep going. Now let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each one. And in my experience with apartment buildings, one of the challenges is that if you are operating in an apartment building where there's multiple floors or shared walls, which is most of the time, the challenge is, let's say that there's an Airbnb, right? in this room right here, this unit. And then next door, let's say there's another Airbnb unit and maybe another Airbnb unit upstairs. Well, let's say that the people are staying in this unit that I'm in right now, um, people are tired, they just got here from, I don't know, from the East Coast flying into the West Coast and they just wanna get some sleep. And maybe it's like 10 p.m. at night. And the people next door also just got there, but they're having a blast, like they just got there, they're setting down their luggage, they, they got some light music, and now the problem is you can hear the noise from all the units. The people upstairs 
are up there, you know, organizing their stuff. They're ready to, go, they're about to go to a concert. It's almost like they're pounding on purpose, you know, stomping on purpose, but really they're just organizing. But there isn't any soundproofing, right? The reality is a lot of apartment buildings, they're, they're super old. Maybe they were built like 50, 100, 150 years ago. And that's one of the challenges that I've had because I actually used to sublease a three unit structure. It was one building. It was a three bedroom, a two bedroom, and a studio. Somebody was always complaining about the other unit. It was too noisy. They were stomping and you could hear all the noise. They couldn't go to sleep. And so because of that reason, I personally got away from the apartments and I have stuck only to single family units. And then when it comes to the single family residences, I think that the only challenge could be is if a person doesn't have the capital, the finances to be able to pay for the rent, the deposit, all the additional furniture, appliances, decor, like I said earlier, it is going to be a much bigger investment, but it will have a higher profit margin when done correctly. Hey, so in order to get the best ROI on your first Airbnb, make sure you guys check out the link in the description down below. I got a free ebook that will show you from A to Z how to start your first Airbnb without owning property. That being said, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one.